Teacher, which commandment is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. The second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. A woman brings her husband to their priest and says, Father, I don't think my husband loves me as much as he should. And we're thinking of getting a divorce, but we want to get your opinion and advice. So the priest takes the husband and calls him over to the side and says, You know, the Bible says that a husband should love his wife as much as Christ loves his church. Can you do that? Husband thinks for a second. He says, you know, Father, I don't think so. So the priest says, well, let's start with a lower level. The Bible says that we should love our neighbors. Could you love your wife as much as you would a neighbor? Husband says, I'm sorry, that's still too difficult. And next, the priest is beside himself by now, and he says, the husband says to love your enemies. Can at least we start there? <laughs> okay, my wife gave me the grimace. <laughs> that didn't get us over too. <laughs> In the gospel reading today, Jesus tells the Pharisees about the three-dimensional aspects of love. Love God, love yourself, and love your neighbor. In saying this, we're saying that you're you should love God with all your heart, mind, and your soul. And Jesus is quoting this directly from the Jewish Shema. This is the prayer which is the essence of the Jewish creed. It is the prayer that every Jewish service today starts with. What it means is that we should give to God a love that dominates our emotions, and our thoughts. It should be the driving force behind all of our actions. Secondly, it says we should love ourselves. Now you would think this would just be a given, right? But we can't just take something like that for granted. In today's world, and you might know some of these people, there's people that hate themselves and their lives. This could be the result of an abusive family life growing up, an ugly divorce, a mental condition, a physical disability, or a number of other things. And it's not hard to imagine if we don't love ourselves, it's going to be very difficult to love anyone else, even God. There's a story about a 10-year-old boy who in the blink of an eye had a life-altering experience and came to hate himself and his life. This little kid was very popular in school and had lots of friends. But one day he came to school and all the kids were calling him names. And some of the boys even wanted to fight him. So that particular day was Monday, December the 8th, 1941. And this little boy was Japanese. Everything changed in his world. He was a Canadian citizen and loved his country very much. But from that day forward, he was considered and labeled an enemy alien. He and his family were taken to an internment camp on the west coast of British Columbia. And for almost four years, every day, the trauma that this little kid had, ashamed that he was Japanese, wishing that he had been born white. After the war, he and his family moved to central Canada to a Christian community. And these Christian people welcomed him and his family 
with open arms, treated them with dignity, respect, and love. Little by little, it took eight years, this now young man learned to love himself again for who he was and discovered God's love, which of course had been there the whole time. Thirdly, love our neighbors. But who exactly is our neighbor? Well, the story I just told you, this Christian community, they didn't care about this boy and his family's background. They welcomed him with open arms. They didn't have a clue. They didn't care. They were very inclusive, not exclusive. Not because it was a politically correct thing to do, but because their values and beliefs as Christian people. And today, that's what we do shepherds are all about. We are inclusive to anyone that comes through our door to worship. Like the Jewish Shema, we have our own creed about love and connection that we adhere to. I've talked to people that have come to our church for the first time, and they have told me that they feel the family environment that we have, the love connection that seems to be invasive in this room. And they feel, they feel very welcome. So as we receive the Eucharist today, let's open ourselves up to the all the love of our mind and our soul, to the love that Christ has for us. And let's continue to carry on that love. And let's express it today with the feeling of love and connection that we stand up now and offer each other a sign of God's peace and forgiveness. <laughs> Are you confused?